Hey everybody, it's James Akers and I want to welcome you and I am so excited you're here because in the next hour I'm going to show you all the ways that I think digital drawing is actually going to change the future of drawing. Now I'm assuming that part of your curiosity is that you already design and sketch with a pencil and you've done it all your life and that's a good thing because there are some 10 or 20,000 years of human history that have instilled in us that mind-eye connection, that ability to bring out the best of our imagination with the interface, if I can call it that, of the pencil. And digital drawing essentially puts that on steroids because it combines the pencil with the modern digital editing tools of Photoshop. And the combination is a complete game changer. So you are definitely in the right place because today I'm going to show you three of the most important ways that Procreate has actually made me a better architect and designer and why switching to Procreate from my old school pencil and watercolor brushes was one of the smartest things I've ever done in my life. Now, the way I've laid this workshop out, I'm going to start with why drawing is still so important to architecture and design. Then I'm going to talk about how I made the conversion from paper to Procreate so you can see if you recognize anything in that process. And lastly, I'm going to talk about three of the most important ways iPad drawing has changed the way I design and render and how it can do the same for you. Now, I'm guessing for many of you, this is not your first time trying this software. And I want to assure you that if you have ever failed to become proficient at one of these apps or forgot what you learned between projects, it is not your fault. Most of the training that's available right now for these apps is in the form of either owner's manual videos prepared by the manufacturers themselves, which generally lack the context of being used in real world situations, or in YouTube videos that are effective insofar as they go, but your learning and your flow can get all messed up when YouTube decides the next tutorial you should see is how to earn 100000 a month selling real estate on Amazon. So it's easy to feel like you're out there on your own to learn these apps, picking through one tutorial at a time without any coherent through line, or without ever getting a sense of how these apps can help you in your day-to-day -day work. But there's another systemic problem facing those who still draw by hand. And that is the devaluation of drawing skill over time by those who say the pencil no longer matters. It's easy to understand why. The computer has become so dominant and has brought so many advantages to the profession that drawing by hand can now seem quaint, more like a sign that someone has become outdated and irrelevant than that they are creative and imaginative. No one here is proposing we turn our backs on the advantages of computers, but we shouldn't deny that drawing by hand has its own advantages over design with a keyboard and mouse. For starters, drawing is still a personal language that differentiates your work from everyone else's. 3D modeling was a novelty when it first came out, but now it has become a commodity. And one of the easiest ways to stand out in the computer design era is by continuing to draw. Hand drawings, especially the kind you see here, embrace the ambiguous, allowing your clients to see things in the sketch that aren't necessarily there, but that they may like. Things that cause them to lean in, ask questions, and become more engaged in the design process. And drawing is still a great way to communicate ideas in minutes, not hours. If you can sketch your ideas quickly and in a charming way, you can sell your ideas in a fraction of the time it takes to model the same idea in 3D CAD. And drawing is still a doorway to the imagination. It's the first step in a journey to get to a place you don't even know you're going yet. When you design or sketch with a fat pencil or brush, your subconscious sees ideas you never would have thought of in the random gestures of your brush strokes. And paying careful attention to those happy accidents can lead you in new directions and help you grow as a designer. And drawing is still a way to engage and the best way to involve others in the design process. Drawing leaves a record of its own process, sometimes beautiful, sometimes messy, but always public, so that others can feel a part of the process and offer feedback. Not just sit back and wait for the computer fantasies of the designer to come spitting out of a black box. And drawing will always be a way to understand and a daily practice that adds value to life outside of the office. Whether sketching while you travel, making cards and sketches for loved ones, or pursuing your own art, drawing is a way to see the world and understand it in more detail. 
can add richness and beauty to your life outside of work. So to those who say the pencil is dead and drawing is no longer relevant, and that CAD is the only viable way to design and render anymore, I am here to tell you that's wrong. Our schools and our architecture firms have their own reasons for wanting us all to think that, but it is just not true. You can see all of these reasons in the return to drawing underway in some of the world's most prominent architectural firms, including Bjark Ingels, Norman Foster, Frank Gehry. What makes digital drawing so powerful is that it can actually help you draw better, as I hope to convince you in a moment, because it combines the familiarity of the pencil with the power and mobility of the iPad and the modern digital editing tools of Photoshop. Or as I like to say, it updates your drawing talents for the 21st century. Now, I realize that there are many people out there teaching Procreate on their YouTube channels, so you might be wondering what makes me the most qualified to teach this. Well, one is that I've been a practicing architect, design consultant, and professional renderer for more than 25 years, working in the high-pressure world of hospitality design, designing and rendering resorts, restaurants, casinos, and even sports stadiums all over the world. So I know what it means to get real work done under tight deadlines. Two is that when my watercolor rendering business became too slow and too expensive to keep up with the era of computer design, I had no choice but to switch to digital drawing to try and keep my business alive. So the lessons I've learned and hope to pass on to you today were all earned through real world experience where failure was definitely not an option. And three is that since committing myself to Procreate back in 2015, I've been able to help thousands of people on my YouTube channel Plus, I'm entering my second year of teaching iPad drawing for UCLA's School of Architecture and Design. But it wasn't always that way. Years ago, after getting my bachelor's at Kent State and my master's in architecture at the University of Oregon, I came to New York City with the goal of working for a prestigious firm so I could figure out how the best architects got real architecture built in the real world. My break came when I got a job with Hardy Holtzman Pfeiffer, known for their radical early houses and innovative public buildings, not to mention their snappy dressing. Because I had some relevant construction experience and was pretty good at thinking through construction details, my first assignment was to single-handedly create the hand-drawn working drawing set for the Glimmer Glass Opera Theater in Cooperstown, New York. The building was all timber-framed inside like a huge barn, and it even had huge barn doors that opened up to the cool summer evenings during intermission. It was great training, but when the project was over, I didn't see much of a future there, given all the talented people ahead of me in line. And after two more years at HHPA, I came up with a new plan. I decided to take a year off and get a master's in real estate finance and development at Harvard and MIT so I could learn how buildings got built from the perspective of a real estate developer this time. But again, always with the goal of figuring out how I could get my own designs built someday, but this time as my own client. It was after graduation while looking for that first internship in real estate that a friend of mine who was a full-time architectural renderer called and asked if I could fill in for her at one of her very busy clients. On a lark, I said yes, but I was very nervous. I had always been pretty good at drawing, but I had never done any professional renderings before. But I studied every book on rendering I could find, made some of the worst architectural renderings you've ever seen, but got it better with each new job, eventually winning two national rendering awards in a single year. So I was on my way as a full-time professional renderer, making about five times what my first real estate job had even offered me. There were economic downturns during those years, but because I was not only a renderer, but also a registered architect and a pretty good designer, I survived by becoming a sort of one-stop concept design and rendering shop, as in this case where I helped Rockwell Group Architects in New York City imagine a restaurant for David Copperfield in Times Square where three times per night, a group of volunteers would be tied up in a wooden crate, sawn in half by a gigantic blade, then reappear in the torch of the Statue of Liberty. The design was never built, but David Copperfield loved it, and it led to a bunch of new work from Rockwell Group and others, and my future looked bright. But two ominous clouds kept appearing on the horizon. First, 3D computer rendering became a commodity that every new graduate could do, 
and I lost work to clients who began doing their own in-house renderings or hired offshore renderers for a tenth of my price. And second, with each downturn of the economy came more pressure for architects to lower their fees, and my expensive watercolor rendering model became all the more difficult to justify. So I knew my business model was living on borrowed time. I did my best to adapt to this new world, using whatever digital tools I could to speed up my design and presentation process. The real time savings came when I learned to use Photoshop to make revisions to scans of my renderings. So now I no longer had to use X-Acto knives and rubber cement to revise outdated images. Man, I hated that. But Photoshop could only help so much, and the end of my business came in 2008 when my most lucrative client, the one for whom I had ghost designed that David Copperfield job, told me they could no longer afford to hire me. The comet had struck, and I had to find a new way to design and render if I was going to continue supporting my family and avoid the humiliation of becoming irrelevant. It was in the middle of that search for an alternative that a more hopeful comet appeared in the sky. Tim Cook announced that Apple would be releasing the first version of the Apple Pencil and that it would work with the Procreate digital painting app for iPad. I saw the writing on the wall for my rendering business and I immediately set out to learn everything I could about Procreate. I was always worried that my clients would abandon me for using Procreate instead of pencil on paper, as in this job designing a bunch of pop-up stores for Warby Parker. But while I was doing that, I was actually learning all the ways that Procreate could help me work smarter and faster than I had worked before in everything, architecture included. Long story short, not only did I come up with ways that I could render faster with Procreate, but I came up with ways that other people could render without even knowing how to draw, as in this interior design exercise I do every year with my UCLA students. But I also came up with ways to use these drawing to scale techniques I invented in Procreate to help me with all the steps of architectural design, from earliest concept sketches to schematic design documents ready for further development in 2D and 3D CAD, as in the house shown here under construction in upstate New York. So it's not really an exaggeration to say that Procreate helped me save my business, start the YouTube channel with 32,000 subscribers, become a UCLA professor of iPad drawing, and be an invited speaker at SketchUp Basecamp 2022 and the American Society of Landscape Architects in 2023. So in the time we have left, I'd like to share three of the most important ways digital drawing has changed the way I design and render and how it can do the same for you. The first insight I want to share is called why Procreate is actually the best app for designers, but nobody knows it. The question I hear a lot that inspired this insight goes something like this. If I can't draw to scale in Procreate and if I can't even export files to CAD, then how can it be such a great app for architects and designers? When I first started using Procreate, I had kind of the same opinion. My sole purpose was to make faster, more revisable renderings just to save my business. But as I was doing that, I was unwittingly inventing techniques I could use to design, draft, detail, and render in Procreate too. So that's the end of part one of five. To learn more about how iPad drawing can make you a better designer, check out any of the links in the description below. Or to start your journey in either Morfolio Trace or SketchUp for iPad, check out either of these two videos you see right here. And I'll see you in the next video.